guys, my name is Roberta Peel from Oregon Trail Silver. I just wanted to discuss with you some really quick tips and tricks when it comes to rolling out silver or copper or what have you in your uh, rolling mills. Whether you're using one of my plates or one of somebody else's, this is going to help you out. Okay. All right. So um, first of all, when you're rolling out something really, really thin, you have to keep in mind that you can't really close your rollers too closely. Okay. So if you're looking right here, you've got your rolls, right? Your top and your bottom rolls. And you have a good thick plate and then you have a really, really thin piece of metal. What this means is that you're only going to be able to close your rolls so much before your rollers themselves actually grip your plate. You do not want them to grip your plate. So what I usually do with a thinner piece is I'll go ahead and I'll close my rolls um, you know, onto the silver as well as onto the texture plate and I'll mark my spot as far as uh, on the dial where it's at. Okay, And then I'll take the silver away and I'll close it back up to that spot close it all the way down until it's touching the metal and then bring it up about halfway in between. All right, halfway in between where it was with the, with the silver and with the plate. Now, when I close it with the silver, it's gonna be tight, so I wrench it down as much as I possibly can. Uh, untwist it, take the silver out, very, very gently close it down until it just touches the plate, measure halfway in between. Okay, so in the one spot with the silver and then the one spot's bare, halfway in between is exactly where I want my rolls to be set up when I'm rolling this out, okay? Now, on the other hand, when you have something like uh, 18 gauge, 18 gauge is gonna get significantly thick. It's gonna get a significantly more um, detail, okay? So what you're gonna find is with 18 gauge, and this is just what I do, again, I'll wrench it down, I'll mark the spot on the mill, make sure that you know where it's touching on the plate, mark the spot on my dial, okay? So, as you can see, there's gonna be more room to compress. So what you're gonna do, let's say you have your dial, right, and it's got your, uh, well, it usually ends off at 30 or 40, one or five, because there's five tick marks in between on mine, right? So let's say with the silver in it, with the 18 gauge, I can roll my dial down to about three, okay? Now, um, if I roll it out and it's, uh, or if I went ahead and closed my rolls up, and um, to where it touches just the plate, like just touches, don't clamp down on it, don't grip it, okay? But if I do it to where it just touches the plate and find out that it's at like say a 12, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually only gonna move this about five tick marks over, so I'll probably close it down to an eight, okay? And the reason why I do that is because this right here, this space between where the silver is and where you mark your rollers, that's how deep that it's gonna go. Now obviously with something as thick as 18 gauge versus something as thin as 24, you're gonna have more room to be able to press down, okay? So just make sure that when you're doing this, it's gonna be, you know that it's gonna be a little harder to roll. Make sure you anneal your metal, always anneal your metal. But this way, for example, if I'm doing something like a like a 18 gauge, and I know that I only take it down to like an eight, you know, for example, then my my metal is going to be compressed down, not quite halfway in between the divots. Okay, and there's plenty of space in a lot of these. Um, I've gotten to the point to where these are so deep and they're so clean and so crisp, and obviously from end to end. So anyhow, just keep in mind uh, when you close your rollers that it's about how far down that it's going to be compressing, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and show you guys how I do this. All right, first thing I'm going to do is open up my rolls wide enough. And you see the numbers on the top of the dial? This one's a Durston. I also had a Pepe, and Pepe's are great for this as well. In fact, I designed these plates to go with the Pepe, and they'll work for any Durston model as well. Um, anyhow, so as you can see, I can slide the plate in inside the plate and the metal in. What I'll do, and you notice the cardstock underneath it, um, so make sure that the cardstock is, uh, you can see it overlapping on both, on both sides. What I like to do is I like to start off my silver, this is 24 gauge, so what I like to do is start my silver off like right at the very end and then just kind of pop it in just a little bit and I'm going to close it down. It's a little bit too close, there we go. So now I'm really going to torque on it. All right, I'm going to wrench it down and it's sitting at about an eight right now, okay? See my little tick mark right there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ungrip it. There we go. Pull it out, and I'm gonna take the plate in, just the plate, and until it touches, okay? I'm not gripping it, I'm not torquing it down, you do not wanna ruin your rolls, okay? So just until it touches, 
okay? And then what I'll do, so that's at about a 21. Now, usually with this thinner stuff, I know that I can't go too far down, all right? So what I'll do is go hmm, somewhere halfway in between, we'll say a 15. 15 still feels like it's touching the metal, so lower or raise it up a little. There we go. All right, so now we're at a 13. It's not touching the metal. Obviously, it, silver's not going through. So I'm gonna reline my silver up, make sure it's nice and even, and then roll it through. You should just be able to slide the plate out. Beautiful impression. See? So that's how I go ahead and find my distance. Hope that helps.